All right. Uh, tonight, I'll be making um, some uh, uh, chili, like a simple chili, if you will. Uh, uh, going to be a... That's a, one of the more com complex as in the amount of ingredients I'm using um, just to pre-show you I've said it in other videos before that I don't uh, my, my I change up you know I just know the basis of most recipes and uh, what I usually do is I uh, like I do a lot of my writing and stuff I just do all scraps of paper what I did is to make sure I can uh, uh, when I uh, go to make the beginning of this video and uh, that you already seen the list is that I I know fundamentally pretty much what has to be uh, put in or whatever so I wrote out you know a little bit beforehand just to make sure um, sometimes I don't even get the order right when I am cooking but anyways uh, so you get the idea that there's actually quite a few ingredients in this one uh, anyways you're gonna want to start with uh, um, uh, getting yourself a, 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 a large uh, container if you will or uh, a pot cauldron if you will uh, okay you want a large one of those I'm going to leave the lid aside for now um, now you're gonna want to grab yourself a smaller pot uh, uh, and uh, also want to grab yourself a measuring cup Okay, in that measuring cup, go ahead and put yourself a half cup of water. All right, half a cup of water. Nice there. Okay, put that lid two down here for now. Okay, um, take a half of your half of water so a quarter cup and go ahead and pour that in the bottom of your uh, uh, your, your your large uh, should have the camera over here I guess right, but then we pour it in here for uh, in the large one you can go ahead and turn that on uh, 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 max grab yourself uh, half a pound of ground beef now I uh, I have mine in little, uh, little, 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 little cubes, if you will, at one sixth of a pound. So you can go ahead and uh, put in a half a pound's worth. Alright. Now, you want to grab yourself uh, uh, your, your uh, uh, um, cutting board and knife get those out and ready um, you're also going to want to grab your onion all right so your knife cutting board uh, all right I guess I'll wing over here real quick for the cutting board and the onions all right so I'm going to grab my carrot too uh, all right so I'll bring over a carrot this is uh you want about a cup of carrot when you do get to it but I don't I'm not going to be measuring it I just you know I got what I've got uh, it'll be close enough and uh, roughly about a cup now I got uh, a large onion if you will but about a cup uh, of onion once it's all chopped up now I got three smaller ones there um, get yourself a large spoon uh, mixing spoon there like so okay now um, you can put in uh, 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 I like to pre-season I should say I like to pre-season my meat um, I have a coarse salt in this box here um, you're gonna want to, to put in a total of uh, uh, two tablespoons of salt by the time you're done this maybe more if you like a lot more salt but I'm gonna be putting in one right now roughly and I'm just gonna eyeball it for myself all right and I'm going to be putting in, uh, you want about a teaspoon of pepper. Um, I'm just going to do that to an eyeball it because I like a lot of pepper myself, so it doesn't really make a difference. But the majority of people, with the rest of my ingredients, that's uh, quite enough. All right. Okay, now just flip your meat. Um, make sure you keep it so it doesn't 
you know, cook in one lump, if you will. Okay. lower your your uh, burner down uh, so we're just gonna uh, dee -dee -dee -dee. Uh, ba -boom. Oh, just want to lower the camera hair down I guess eh okay I think that's pretty good okay anyways I should uh, I'll just bring this and throw them into here for now there we go all right now you want to keep uh, your bottom here from cooking too much. Go ahead and add your other quarter cup if you need it. I'm going to grab another half a cup right now, roughly. Now as, I, uh, as the meat cooks a little bit on one side, I just flip it and I kind of shave it off. And you just keep keep doing that and your meat will uh, cook really fast from frozen all right I'm gonna try to speed up a little bit here okay okay now. keep being on the wrong side of the And one more. Okay, I'm still on the camera. There we go. But look, make sure I'm not covering myself or doing something while I'm trying to do do this. Now, if you have a problem cutting onions, go ahead and slice them all in half if your eyes are getting irritated. Um, just put them under water. You can go ahead and do that, and you could start a. Uh, chopping up your carrot if you will uh, but if you're going to do that I suggest you take your meat off the stove or I've cut your onions prior. I'm going to go over here again and just shake the side of the meat. Chili happens to be uh, one of those things that you know, some people like it sweet, some people like it you know, savory, some people like it spicy. Um, and then you know, then you got if if you if you I guess I guess if you will, there's zero, and then you could go in the alarm wise, you could go one, two, three, four. You know, like when they get to the to the hotter chilies, if you will. But I guess you'd go minus one, minus two for the side when they go sweet. Um, and how much spice is in them, uh, not in them, or I guess if you'd say. Um, I personally uh, uh, love spicy chili, but I'm going to make this video not based on a spicy, just probably, I guess, what I'd call a, a one a one alarm chili <laughs> um, with a little sweet kick, I guess. Um, I like... Uh, a little sweetness in them, uh, hence where the carrot's going to come in play. Alright, just going to throw these in here while the meat cooks. Doesn't make a difference. Let's get it out of my way. Alright.
I don't know if you can hear my cat snoring there. She's on the chair there in the, in the room there. My oldest cat, Poo Poo. She's uh, snoring away with her head curled up there. All right. Now, chop, you know, um, you can chop up, I guess, uh, uh, onions as small as you really want. Um, now, if you want, put your onions in here if you don't like having chunks of onions. If you don't like having vegetable chunks in your um, food, uh, some people don't. They like, you know, the, especially the larger chunks they really don't like. But if you don't like that, just go ahead and put them in this pot for now. We're just getting the onions uh, with the meat so it can start to tenderize the meat. Um, the acids in here help a lot. Also, we're going to have to get those uh, beans to get the flavor in the beans ahead of time. Oh, at the bottom of that onion there. Uh, yep, I like that. Okay. Tell people no need to peel it. Uh, you don't need to peel carrots. I never do. Um, I don't know why people would. I don't peel my potatoes unless I'm making nice mashed potatoes. Anyways, this you just want to pretty much cut it up uh, as small as you possibly can. Uh, not too small, but uh, I'm just going to give it a cut up the middle. Okay, I'm just going to slice these up. So they, what I do is I leave them together up at the top edge just so they stay together and it's more easy on my. Sometimes I do it just like that and leave the whole carrot together, but it's just to help when you want to chop it up. All right. Okay. Put this in here. I say you could have put your onions in here too if you want. Uh, I don't like chunks of carrot in my spaghetti sauces or in my chili. Sometimes I do put them in my spaghetti sauce too because you can cut down on the amount of sugar you use. All right, roughly for uh, every you know half a cup to a cup, depending on how sweet you like something, we can almost replace a you know a half a teaspoon to a or I mean a teaspoon to a tablespoon worth of a sweetness in something by adding carrots because they have a lot of sweetness themselves. So I'm just going to chop up left them a little bit of meat here. All right, I'm going to put another quarter cup in. Okay. Now you can use blended meat here if you want, like if you have a ground pork and a ground beef uh, mix. I, would, I wouldn't say using ground pork uh, only, um, just a little too lean. Kind of one, you know, and if you're just going to use a really lean ground pork, I would even say uh, if you ever had steak and you trim off the fat before it's done, just brown that up and put it in your, your ground pork. Okay. Okay, turn this on max here. Get your peas in there. Okay. Okay, you want about a cup of peas. Okay. 
about Now you could put mushrooms in too. I love mushrooms in my, don't happen to have any on hand. Uh, uh, we are, uh, time in the year right now is uh, getting near the end of the year and uh, usually mushrooms are on sale often. So the best time to buy them is just when they're on sale. Um, hence, uh, a lot of produce and stuff coming out. use a green pepper um, because you know they're cheaper in sense um, uh, now I happen to get a, a person I know has a garden uh, with a lot of peppers just a field garden if you will it's not like a regular garden anyways they uh, have lots of uh, leftovers a few foods they don't usually use Usually I get uh, boxes and boxes of old ground tomatoes, and you will, if you will, and I can I just convert it into a, you know, stews or whatever. Uh, or sorry, I stew them and can them. All right, I'm just gonna wash the outside of my pepper. Okay, now. I just like the taste of uh, peppers uh, in, in a chili. I don't know, can't exactly say why. I just think they taste good. Anyways. It's funny if you actually see the green pepper, or the red pepper, it has a little bit of green on it. I guess you'd call it a Christmas pepper. Once your meat is completely cooked through, which is usually by the time I'm done this, we're going to be able to add our, uh, our beans. Um, not a large, I guess to say not a large dice, but just a regular dice on my uh, peppers and on my onion. Usually just a dash smaller on the onion is nice. There you go. Yeah, I'm just looking for a, let's say a little, a little piece like that. That's how I like them. There we go. Okay, so the acids now from the onion and the pepper will really help break down this meat um, as in its proteins. Uh, as I can show you here, uh, it's all cooked, but the meat itself is, uh, is like this, you know, so I'm going to chop that up into smaller little pieces. Because when I when I ground my meat, I'm right here when I'm grounding my meat and it comes out, it comes out and if you ever seen Play-Doh when you squeeze it or if you ever watch the butcher, you know, so it comes out in long, long strings. Now I only single ground mine so mine breaks up very easily. But if you get it coming from the store, it's very, uh, they, they double ground the ground beef. So if you cook it and it's lumped together, it really stays together a lot easier or a lot more firmly. Than a, a single ground. Right. Now about the, I about want no piece of meat bigger than my vegetables that I already have here.
Okay, so you want about, that was about a cup of green pepper, if you will. Um, that's where you're going to want. Now you're going to want uh, two um, 796 milliliter cans of kidney beans. If you've done them yourself already, well, you're going to want roughly, uh, you know, let's say 800, close to eight, uh, 1,600 milliliters of uh, once the juice is removed, but uh, equivalent to. So, now, uh, they're on sale, so I happen to buy um, 540. So if you put two uh, 796 milliliters, which is close to 800, you have four milliliters from 800, two 800 cans is 1,600 milliliters. These are 540. So three of these together is 1620. So it's just 20 milliliters more, it's barely nothing. And this is the equivalent to two big cans. So um, I guess I'm gonna uh, Okay. What I'm gonna do is whip over here. Okay, I'm gonna grab a strainer. Okay, so you grab your strainer. Grab your can opener. When you use a can opener, um, it might be easier to hold them back here, but especially if they're plastic candles, the metal is only up in the very front, so it's better to hold your can opener at the front. Also, when you turn the wheels, is the metal is only in here, so if you're out here, you'll end up breaking them a lot sooner. They're meant to break, so if you've ever seen those little tiny metal ones that are just made out of metal, you have less metal in one of these than you do those. So these just have plastic grips on them and whatnot to make a, a little leverage, but they're meant to break. All right, so I'm just gonna rinse that off, throw that over here. Okay, now you're gonna notice that they're, they're very sludgy in here. You wash a bean so, essentially, so you don't have gas. Um, there's a lot of gases in here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the can itself and just go dump these in the pot. All right. Okay, I'll put this over there. Open my next one. And for those that uh, don't know, um, this part of the can opener here. Uh, that little, this little flat side, this flat edge right here, and that hole is a bottle opener. So you, you know, like a, if you can't twist a beer bottle cap off, some of them are, aren't twistable, but if you can't, you know, you just use one of these. I do know most people should know that, but some young people may not, especially if they've had it. They always get their drinks open for them. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I can fit both in there at once. Couldn't fit all three, so. want to get as much water as you can out but go put these in the reason you want to get that water out is um just because it's gonna have the sludge if you will in it okay so now we're gonna mix these up in here If you ever watched The Big Bang Theory, I believe it's uh, uh, which episode, but they got 
Sheldon uh, talking about how it's not chilly if it's got beans in it. Now you can go ahead and put the other uh, quarter cup in here. Grab yourself another half a cup. I tell people to just grab little bits, a uh, few reasons. You could, sp a whole cup you could easily spill. Um, next of all, I only put them in in little bits and amounts because um, I'm not, I, I, I use the, just a little bit of water to essentially like frying. I don't want to use oils and butter and margarines or whatever in here. So, you know, I, uh, to reduce the amount of oils, I just keep water in there so nothing sticks. All right. And now this is essentially half, this is half right filled with um, beans. Okay. Now what I'm actually going to do here is uh, put my seasonings in here. Uh, I'm going to start that now. You're going to want a tablespoon and a teaspoon. All right. Just going to set this aside over here. Hopefully I got a, a good angle here. Okay. All right. So I got a good angle. Okay. So I'm going to start. Um, Basically, I'm gonna, you can start with your, your, your teaspoon, which is going to be pepper. And uh, uh, like I say, I already added my pepper uh, already to the meat. Um, so you would use your teaspoon for that. If you haven't already seasoned your meat, I do um, just by eye. So maybe you hadn't done it. Um, now you're going to want a teaspoon of sage. Okay. Now this comes out of the garden. Um, I'm just gonna grab a, a big, big fat pinch, um, essentially, and then I don't actually have to dirty my teaspoon. <laughs> okay. Now you don't have to mix it, but I just, I will as I go along, anyways. I find it's just a lot easier than when you get everything clumped in there to try getting it all mixed up then evenly distribute, uh, distributed. Okay, now you're gonna wanna, uh, uh, you could use a teaspoon here of jalapeno if you have it. Um, I think it's almost a requirement to make a really good taste. Now I personally love jalapeno so I'll be using a tablespoon. But for your recipe I suggest you uh, you, you keep it down to a teaspoon, maybe the first time you try it. Now, uh, this is my own dried uh, jalapenos. Uh, I guess I should, uh, can, you can see there, you know, so I chop up whole jalapenos and big trays and I just dry them all out. All right. You're gonna want a tablespoon of paprika, which is what I have exactly left there. All right, that's gonna flavor as well as help keep things red. Um, now you're gonna want uh, two tablespoons of garlic powder. You can put more too if you like. That's quite a bit for most people. Go ahead and put two parsley. I'm just gonna wipe that off there, just to make sure I don't transfer any over. All right. Okay. Hmm. Smell is getting to me. Smelling good. Alright. Now I'm actually going to put my other tablespoon here uh, of salt. Again, I use coarse salt for this. Um, coarse salt is uh, real salt. Uh, table salt uh, has a sugar in it for instance it's when you look at inside the box and just see it's not just table salt isn't just salt so okay wipe 
this a little again. Now I'm going to go grab a tablespoon. I would say if you're not going to use the carrots and the peas, if you don't want to, you don't have to, um, if you're not going to use them to put an extra tablespoon of, of sugar here. Um, I'm only going to put one tablespoon for myself, but you would want two if you're not going to put the carrot in. That carrot is sweet itself. Okay, we got that in. Now you're going to want at least two tablespoons of chili powder. Unless you make your own blend or something, you're going to want a two here. Now you can put more if you want, if you really like the uh, a hotter, say, chili. I'm going to heat mine actually a little, but it's just because I like them. Okay. Oh, a little extra, a little more for me, just because I like it. Okay. Now, I put that in the beans, just to get them uh, all coated and all the flavors to penetrate the bean. The bean is actually the hardest thing to take the flavor. One reason the chili tastes so much better the next day is because when that flavor gets to actually penetrate the bean which often you need to add more salt after once that's happened and another reason you may want to cook the chili for a long long time because the flavor does change after a good six to eight hours especially if you've cooled it down okay now um uh, uh but um bump bum you can put your other another quarter cup of water in there Okay, I'm just doing this. You may not need a quarter cup depending on how fast you're evaporating and working at. I, like I said, I'm just keeping a little bit on the bottom. Okay. If you have it on really, really low, you barely need any water. You could be working at a full speed there. You don't, you don't even need it, especially if you had your meat already, uh, it was already thawed. Uh, uh, then, then you, have, you shouldn't even have an issue here at all. Um, you could even just take a, a little bit of the water from your carrots and peas here and just pour it in there as you go along too. Makes no difference. Okay, uh, now I'm going to want to take that quarter cup of water that you did have and again wipe that to make sure you got no thing in it. Grab yourself two tablespoons of flour and put that in your water. You can grab yourself a, a little fork if you should have one. And just whip it good. Now this is going to lighten the color as well as give a little thickness to the, and then cut the flavors. Now I'm just going to, I'm mixing this ahead of time a little bit just to make sure if any clumps are in there that they'll dissolve up. Okay, now you also want to grab, now that's your last thing, a tablespoon of soya sauce. Now depending on the kind of soya sauce you have, um, you could have a saltier one. This is actually not that salty of one, but it darkens a lot. Um, so you can just put in about a tablespoon there. Okay, great. Boom. And I'm actually just gonna make sure you get all that off. There, put that away, done that, and that. Alright. So like I say, if you feel like just going like this. Put your thing and pour off a little bit of the water. All right, I'm going to actually turn this off. Nice. Okay. Just a little more here. Okay. 
Wow. Okie dokie. So essentially we've got everything we, we need here other than tomatoes. Um, they're going to go in, not say at the end, but they're going to go in uh, uh, shortly enough. You can actually take them out, um, open the cans up. That you'll want uh, two cans as well. You could use three if you like it more tomato-y. Uh, sometimes I, I do throw in a third can when I just, you know, want to change it up to a strong amount of tomato taste. So anyways, uh, well actually I'll probably just open them over here because I don't need to go to the sink. So, uh, alright, this I do not need at all so I might as well move that aside. And I do not need any of my scraps. Just gonna throw that here in the side. All right. Okay. There. So open up one can. I essentially I I, I like the ratio of um, a can of tomatoes to a can of beans is what I like. Some people may may like it uh, uh, more beany. Maybe you want a little less tomato. Somebody might, you know, and use smaller, like the smaller size cans. Or somebody may actually like um, uh, say more uh, tomato of a taste. Now, you can't you could, I guess, use whole tomatoes, but they wouldn't work out so well. If you don't like diced tomatoes, you can buy pureed tomatoes. Um, if you happen to get a can, now I just buy all diced myself. Um, okay, so Pour the rest of this water in here. All right. So it's there. I also like a thick chili. So what I'm going to do here is um, I'm going to use this to hold back and just let the juice out, not the tomato, just the like the acid, if you will. Okay, I'm going to squeeze lightly. Okay. Now I like to, if I did that, just put it there, do it again with this one. Mix that up. There, the tomato juice acid will help, and you're going to cook instead of. Now, the tomatoes still aren't stewing, but I usually crush a lot of my tomatoes when I put them in just because. Now, essentially, the biggest piece of all this will be the bean itself, will be the largest item. Um, use your masher now. Go ahead and Mash up your carrot and your peas. You can puree them if you want, if you really want to get into them. I don't mind the odd looking pea or piece of carrot, like you can see it's there, but I say I don't want to have any firm tastes of it. There you go, a little bit left there. All right, you could even grate your carrot if you had wanted. Oh, I'm gonna leave that up here. All right, so. Now with the tomato juice, it's just 
just you can see the juice is over the just to say over the beans with that added juice that I put so here you can see the uh, you know it's, I don't know what the color is here I'll just kind of blend it all together and see so you can you know kind of see that all right that in too now now you could put v8 juice in here um to get a little more like a, a nice flavor now v8 juice is a you know a lot of the ingredients i've just put in here is already in v8 juice um that's why i uh my mother put in a lot of her recipes growing up she that's what she would use to flavor things is the v8 juice itself um uh or i should say but no yeah the vegetable cocktails or whatever there not just the juice itself, tomato juice. Uh, but, uh, so, now this is pretty good. You gotta, if you're gonna soak beans, I would say you, you need a couple days on your beans to be soaked. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is actually just slowly go down back and forth, all the way to the bottom, come back up. Again, and I'm going to squeeze out that water now, or the juice. Okay, again. This is just so you don't get big chunks of tomatoes. Um, too big, if you will. If you got those little uh, puree machines, you can drop them right in here and just whoop, 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 all the way. I say I don't mind. I don't mind chunks of tomato. I just don't want nothing too big. All right. Before you mix your tomato, put your flour right in the middle of your tomato area. Here. And then mix. The tomatoes are still cold, so nothing will get too sludgy too fast. Waste. 
Okay, dokily. Now this is a. Uh, as soon as the heat comes to it, a little bit of warmth. You can go ahead and sample it and see if you want to modify anything. All right. Don't need to get a vegetable in, just the juice. Mm, perfect. <laughs> mm. Now I could go a lot spicier myself, but I get to show people within reason how easily it is. You can add, uh, like I say, a lot more chili if you like it. More chili-like, it's your choice. Um, I just tried to make a real easy one and just modified it slightly just a little here and there for myself tonight but um, I think you got the basic um, principles here um, of this you can uh, essentially serve as soon as it's too hot to serve and because um, even if you give it an hour it still ain't going to be as good as it's going to be tomorrow so my suggestion is you just cook it take it off the heat and not waste your time with heating it for six to eight hours uh, you can do this in the morning and then just uh, you know leave it on the stove all day after it's gotten hot and come back at night and just turn it back on for supper and the flavors are going to be a lot a lot more uh, there if you will but just gonna put this away Now, I like um, garlic bread with this, so I'm going to grab, usually it's enough time for me to eat. Now, uh, if you've seen my videos for bread, I know my bread. All right, so I'm just gonna actually make one slice. I also like um, rice with my chili, uh, just plain white rice on the top. I'll show you, I actually have some on my wood stove in the back. All right, so uh, there we go. Dokily. No, I don't. Uh, I'm not a guy that needs to put a bunch of uh, butter or margarine. I just a little parsley. And a little garlic powder. That's all I do. Right up into the toaster oven. To do. And I'll be eating in about two minutes. This is bubbling up. The juice is up to the top now, so she's definitely hot enough to eat. Okay. So I'm just going to grab the rice. If they weren't canned beans, you definitely have to let it sit here a lot longer. Um, like I say, I'm turning this off now. I'm fine there. Grab myself a bowl. All right. We'll see it there and there. Mm. Love the taste of. I love the taste of the seeds of the green pepper or the peppers. Fresh off the wood stove. Here's uh, my, <laughs> you probably saw all that steam just bubble out of there. Oh, oh just uh, not really even stuck, we're good. All right. Erase from another meal, I just threw a little in the pot and 
turn on my wood stove in the back. It's not particularly hot, hot the wood stove, but it's. I had it on earlier this morning. I was able to heat up that real easily. Okay. I myself. Oh, we're going to want a spoon. Spoon with that. That. Okay. Spoon. And I'm going to want a drink. My meals are all eaten. <laughs> They're not just made. Okay. Guess I'll uh, scoop a little up here. Now, I usually add water the next day too. You'll need to add more water because uh, I find it goes too thick. Okay. And I like You can, uh, that's what she ends up looking like for me. Um, so I'll uh, fold over the edge a little bit here so you can get a good view of the, and that's it right there, the chili. She's still really, really hot, but you know I'm willing to burn my mouth. So I'm going to take a little rice with it. That's how I eat, just a, a little rice with it. That's why I, my chili, I've, I believe a lot of people say it's very flavorful, but it's because I always eat, uh, sometimes even I put up uh, like some mashed potatoes on the top too. Mm, I just like that. Mm. That's good. Mm. That's definitely a, a good little uh, meal for the night. I hope that was simple enough for you guys to uh, understand. I'm gonna have this in a. I'm gonna put this in little uh, containers, small containers, and I'm gonna have myself a, uh, you know, 18 meals here probably at least, worth at least more than a dozen, uh, large meals. But if you know lunchtime or something, you can eat during a day, be a little smaller. Anyways, um, see a little bit of garlic bread here with it. A little color on it and essentially it's my meal right there zoom in over top move that out of the way but anyways yep that's my uh it's my meal right there and she's gonna be good okay anyways um Anyways, I hope you liked the video and uh, hope this uh, uh, is delicious for you. All right.